everybody, it's Victor, and this is our last week of the Go For It series, which is all about helping the people we love find the God who loves them. Every week, we've given you a specific challenge. Some of those challenges have been to pray for someone who doesn't know Jesus, and then to be able to do something special for them. Third was just to hang out and have fun with that, with someone who doesn't know Jesus. And the last one was to be bold in talking to others about Jesus. So are you ready for our final challenge? Are you sure? Well, here it is. The final challenge is to not let this be your final challenge. What? What does that mean? Well, there's a Bible verse that's behind everything we're doing in Go For It. And it says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded to you. Basically, Jesus was telling his disciples and challenging us too to go out and tell others about him. But also, he was saying, I'm going to be with you every step of the way. So the challenge for you is to go out and live that go for it life. And that means when you pray for someone, don't just do it once, but pray for them time and time again, all the time that you can. Make a habit of being able to try to help the people you love find the God who loves them. And if you're ready to commit for go for it kind of life, I want you to pray with me right now. And if you don't want to pray right now, that's okay. You don't have to do that too. Just sit back, listen, and think about what I have to say. So everybody, if you can fold your hands, close your eyes, put your head down, and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving us. Help us to reach out to those that we love and the people that we know um, so that they can know you too, that they can know your love. And God, help us to be able to make habit of going out and telling others about who you are. Thank you so much for this Go For It series. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thank you so much, guys. Sit back and enjoy your time at Rich Kids Today. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Erica here, and welcome back to another week in the STEAM Lab! <laughs> Whenever you're learning new things, experimenting, inventing, or anything else one might do in a lab, you need to make sure you have faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And you also have to have something to work with. Today, I asked a few people to let me borrow their glasses for the day. Cheers! Just kidding, eyeglasses, not water glasses. <laughs> I see you. Uh, uh. Okay, these are reading glasses. They're supposed to help you see things better close up. Let's see. Oh, wow, yep, they really work. I see things a lot more clearly. It's like, it's like, it's like focused. Blurry. Focus! Blurry. But look what happens when I put on these glasses. They're for someone who is really farsighted. Wow! I can't see anything. I can't see anything. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like blurry, blurry. Focus, focus. Blurry, blurry. Focus. Isn't that wild? There are a lot of different kinds of glasses. And the reason is because there are a lot of different kinds of people. Not everyone sees the same way. And today's story is about when a guy named Paul met some people who saw things a little bit differently than he did. Go see for yourself. You, you, see, what I, you see what I did there? Ah. Okay. Meanwhile, I've got some more glasses to try on. Whoa. <gasps> These are X-ray glasses. I can see my bones. Just kidding. <laughs> Seriously, though, when did I get that freckle? The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 16 
through 34. Wherever Paul went, he boldly preached the good news of Jesus. This Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. Many Jews and Greeks believed in Jesus, but in nearly every town, a group of Jews would gather to oppose Paul. He and his companions were forced out of Thessalonica, and then later that same group of Jews followed to run Paul out of Berea. Eventually, the believers helped Paul escape to the coast, where he could travel by boat to Athens. Tell Silas and Timothy to join me as soon as they can. Once Paul reached Athens, he walked the streets of the ancient city, disturbed by what he saw, carved and molded statues everywhere. Statues of their gods. The people really believe false gods can help them. In fact, the Athenians believed in around 30,000 false gods. Yeah, they believed these gods were in charge of everything from uh, sports to sleep to doors and cleanliness. A god of grapes. Okay. While Paul waited for his friends, he visited the Jewish synagogue to tell Jews and Greeks alike about Jesus. And in the marketplace, he spoke to anybody who would listen. You have to hear about Jesus. He was killed, but he came back to life. Paul's words stirred up a group of Athenian thinkers. These men felt that they could uh, achieve perfection through knowledge and wisdom. Can you explain what this fellow is chattering about? He seems to be telling us about gods we've never heard of. We shall take this Paul to a meeting of the Areopagus. There, we shall reason it out. Set high on an outcropping of rock, the Areopagus was the high court of Athens. And from this viewpoint, Paul could see all of Athens spread out below him. Closer at hand, the gathered Epicureans and Stoics studied Paul. What is this new teaching you're giving us? You have some strange ideas we've never heard before. Hmm, we would like to know what they mean. <sighs> Paul took a deep breath. These people treated new ideas like playthings, so he wanted to connect the story of Jesus with something they already knew. People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. We are aware of this, please proceed. Paul recalled a small carved altar he had discovered while exploring the city. As I walked around, I looked carefully at the things you worship. I, I even found an altar with to an unknown God written on it. Now, I'm going to tell you about this unknown God. Paul explained to them that the true God created the entire world and everything in it. He created each individual person with a purpose and an adventure to live. He did it so that people would seek him and find him, even though he is not far from any of us. Preposterous. Continue. Paul knew that these Athenians might listen to the words of their own writers that might actually reflect something of who God is. In him we live and move and exist. As some of your own poets have also said, we are his children. Uh, an, an interesting point. Paul told them that people are God's children. God is alive and real, not some carved statue or molded from gold. And now by sending Jesus, God was telling everyone everywhere to turn away from the bad things they've done and to follow him. God has proved this to everyone by raising Jesus from the dead. Preposterous! Fascinating. More like fantasy. Get this joker out of here. No, 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 no. This is new, uh, fresh. We will hear you speak about this again sometime. A man called Dionysius had been among the crowd at the Areopagus. He hurried to catch up as Paul left. I want to know more about this living God, about Jesus. I can help you, friend. So Paul continued to spread the good news and love of Jesus, and after a short time, Dionysius became a follower of Jesus, as well as a woman named Damaris and several others. I know it's a banana, but it just looks like a blurry yellow blob. Whoa! It's hard to focus when you can't see clearly but I think it's important to try and see things from another person's point of view. 
like Paul and the people in Athens. They believed in different gods than Paul. That's why Paul tried to see things how they saw things, so he could tell them about Jesus in a way they'd understand. He told them about the living, one true God who created the whole world and everything in it. And he told them that God proved how powerful he was by bringing a man back from the dead. That man was God's son, Jesus. Many of the people from Athens had never heard of anything like that before. Some thought Paul was kind of crazy, but others wanted to hear more. And Paul was able to help them know Jesus the way he knew Jesus. That's something we can do too. It's the one thing to remember today. You can help others know Jesus. That can be easy if you're talking to someone who sees things the same way you do. But when someone sees things differently, when they believe differently, or when they've had different experiences than you, it helps to try and see things from their point of view. Oh, yes, I see what you're saying now. The best thing to do is to try to keep it real. Be honest about what Jesus has done for you. And it's not just in what you say. You can help people know Jesus by what you do too. When you treat people with love, respect, and kindness, they can see the love of Jesus through you. Everyone's different, and we all see things just a little bit differently. So I think it makes sense to try to see things the way other people see them. And you don't even have to change your glasses to do it. I'll see you.